So here we are at the uh, next talk in this uh, session about, uh, well, real world uh, deployments actually of, uh, of mainly OSGO software. And here we have uh, Andrea Erme. And uh, some of you have been seeing his uh, previous uh, talk. And now he will talk about some technologies that may be more familiar uh, with you. He will be talking about creating maps in GeoServer using CSS and SLD. And I uh, will still introduce him. Uh, some may have not been at the previous talk. So Andrea Eme works at the GeoSolutions Group, and he is an uh, open source enthusiast with strong experience in Java development and GIS. And his interests range from high performance software, huge data, volume management, software testing, and quality, spatial data analysis, algorithms, and map rendering. And he's a full-time open source developer on uh, GeoTools and GeoServer. And you may watch this uh, presentation yesterday with Ian Turton, how he actually manages his time as an open source developer. Um, and uh, if you have not seen it, I recommend watching it. Uh, you'll be a different person as an open source developer. <laughs> um, and he, Andrea received his OSGO Soulcats Award in 2017. And you may share uh, your screen. If you share your screen, it always starts backstage. So that's that's usually not the problem with this uh, tool. So there you go. I'll add your screen and I, I'll go backstage. And uh, OK, the floor is yours, Andrea. Thank you. So in this presentation, I'm going to talk about uh, making maps with your server using SLD and CSS. But before I do that, uh, let me do a quick uh, recap of my company. We, uh, work at GeoSolutions. GeoSolutions offer services around uh, a number of open source projects, such as GeoServer, MapStore, GeoNode, and GeoNetwork. We have offices in Italy in the United States and customers worldwide. We offer support services, deployment, uh, support, customized solutions, training, bug fixing, and whatnot. We are strong believers in open source and open standards, and uh, such we uh, are involved in both OSGEO uh, and uh, OGC and uh, uh, looking after uh, standards which are critical to GeoInt. Now, let's start with a quick tour of the styling languages. Plural because GeoServer supports multiple styling languages. In the beginning, we were supporting only SLD 1.0 core. That was the one and only um, language and to an extent that that's still uh, true today in that uh, the representation of a style in memory, the one that is used by the rendering engine is still an object model which is strongly inspired by SLD 1.0. Then we had the support for SLD 1.1, NYSLD, NMB styles and GeoCSS and all of them end up translating their syntax into that common object model which can then be dumped again into SLD if we want to. They all share more or less the same concept. It's no surprise since they share the same ob object model. So we have layers, we got rules. The rules have filters or selectors that decide what should be painted. Scale dependencies, depend, uh, which decide uh, whether or not we see something at a certain zoom level. And the symbolizers that apply uh, a particular type of uh, depiction for point lines, polygons, and text. SLD 1.0 and 1.1, they are the only OGC styling standards. They are XML-based, verbose, hard to hand edit, not to OGC's fault. They were designed for machine-to-machine -machine communication and not uh, for humans to edit. Still, we have an editor for them in GeoServer uh, with a bit of autocomplete. And the SLD can be generated by uh, multiple external tools uh, with uh, some needs for tweaking when you import them into GeoServer. This is an example of uh, one style that catches all the alpine huts, shows them at least at one to a, a hundred thousand, and uh, uses a particular uh, PNG icon to uh, to display the, the point. And uh, if you think this is verbose, consider that I omitted boilerplate at the beginning and at the end. YSLD is SLD rewritten in YAML syntax. Filtering has been rewritten into CQL which is uh, way more compact. It's like uh, SQL uh, where closes. Can define reusable variables and block, and its verbosity is between SLD and CSS, and has a notion of zoom levels if, if needed. And this is an example of the very same style 
using a, a full definition in YSLD. As you can see, th this is a full style. I have not omitted any boilerplate, so it's definitely more compact, but still a, a number of lines to, to type. Then comes uh, GeoCSS. GeoCSS is a derivation uh, of uh, the CSS language for the web with properties and functionality geared toward uh, map making. So map filtering, uh, filtering is still based on uh, SQL, but we also have rule nesting and uh, rule cascading, which help to keep the styling more compact. And uh, uh, our original style ends up being written in uh, three lines. Type equals alpine hat is the SQL filter. Scale denominator less than 100K is the scale dependency. And we refer to the point uh, symbol by a, a mark property. However, the CSS cascading sometimes confuses people and uh, we added a way to turn it off. It can be very powerful. It can uh, make for uh, very compact styles, but people sometimes do not understand well what, uh, how the rules combine and override each other due to the cascading machinery. We also have MB styles, uh, aka Mapbox GL, which is JSON based and designed for GUI editing. It's geared only for web mercator uh, usage. The symbols are all coming from a, a sprite that is a single large file with all the images inside, reminiscent of all video games designs. Um, and unlike the others, it doesn't have any styling extension. The nice thing about this one is that it can be applied both on the client side and the server side. So you can set up a system like uh, using vector tiles with uh, client side rendering for clients that can do that and fall back on rendering PNGs for clients that uh, don't have a vector tiles capability. And this is an example of the same style with a little boilerplate uh, omitted. Uh, you, we can see the, the sprite. The sprite is uh, this image. Imagine that this is one PNG, and then we have a, an index telling us, oh, the all is at this position in, in the PNG, and the fish is at that position, and so on. And uh, so we basically refer to the, to the sprite and, and then say, ah, yeah, uh, I, uh, please take the image Alpine Hat uh, from, uh, from the sprite. The filter is written in post-fit no notation, which uh, uh, rubs me the wrong way. I uh, always find uh, post-fit notation or uh, uh, Polish uh, reverse notation difficult to read, but whatever, that, that's what it is. And uh, yeah, it's meant to be mostly edited by uh, GUIs, not by hand. Now, we are going to explore a few styling concepts uh, comparing two of the four languages, SLD and CSS. So first off, scale dependencies. Scale dependencies are kind of the easiest filtering subsystem. Uh, there are two ways to, to make uh, an app scale dependent. One is to start omitting details as you zoom out. So for example, in this uh, example here, we have buildings that disappear when I zoom out and they appear when I zoom in. Or we can decide to uh, symbolize stuff in a different way depending on the scale. So for example, changing the thickness as uh, the zoom uh, goes in. How do we express scale dependencies in SLD with the min and max scale denominator properties? In CSS, we have this uh, sort of filter that uses that SSD uh, scale denominator property, and uh, uh, we compare it with a number to decide at which scales we want to display the data. It's also nice that we can use uh, uh, suffixes like K and M to uh, make large numbers more compact and easier to spot. I don't know how many people can say at a glance that this is 1 million and not 10 million or 100,000. I typically have troubles. I have to go and count the zeros. OK, uh, one, uh, one way to make things scale dependent is to use a real world unit of measures. So say that uh, the road is 5 meters on the ground uh, thick. So in CSS, we just say, well, the stroke width is 5m, 5 meters, or we could say 5ft, 5 feet. In case of SLD, uh, we have this uh, unit of measure property with a long URI that eventually means meters. Another way is to categorize based on the current scale. Uh, if uh, the scale dependency is not linear, uh, in that case, uh, we cannot use uh, on the ground units. But we can say something like, OK, the stroke width is a categorization of the scale denominator. 
and uh, less than 400k uh, scale denominator use two pixels between 400 and 800 use 1.9 and so on this is sort of a table which allows us to uh, make the the width of the the stroke scale dependent and this is used a lot in osm bright kind of uh, styles so to do the normal rendering of OpenStreetMap. And this is the same uh, table expressed in uh, SLD using, again, the categorize um, um, function and an environment variable that we call WMS scale denominator. OK, uh, let's go to point styling then. Uh, point styling can be as easy as pointing to a single image. Uh, in CSS and in SLD we already seen it uh, we have to say point symbolizer graphic external graphic online resource and then uh, point to the to the image provide the format and eventually it's uh, it's size if you want to uh, one interesting thing that GeoServer does is to allow SVGs to be used as marks so we take uh, the content of, of the SVG as a um, fillable and strokeable shape and then we can provide uh, the, the fill for it and uh, the sides that we want in the map because, the, well, the, the SVG per se is uh, scalable uh, as much as we want. And we get from this to that icon. Um, uh, it's interesting to use this, uh, to, to see this uh, pseudo selector in uh, CSS that allows us to specify the fill inside the mark. While for SLD, we say, OK, the mark is this and the fill is that, uh, among the, the other things. Another thing that we can do, uh, this is a more complicated example, is to combine symbols or switch them based on the scale. So in this example, we want, uh, which, which is taken from OSM again, we want to depict fountains. When we are zoomed out, they are basically two blue circles, uh, one inside the other. When we zoom in, it's a fountain icon. So in uh, CSS, we say, OK, if the scale denominator is less than uh, 6K, then display the fountain as two superimposed circles with the sizes 10, 3. And then we uh, use these uh, strange pseudo selectors to say, OK, inside the first mark, the fill is this color. Inside the second mark, the fill is that color. And instead, when we switch below 3K, then we are going to use the SVG and fill it blue. Marks have a lot of options, uh, a lot of sources of uh, mark symbology because uh, uh, the, the system is pluggable. So we allow using uh, TTF fonts, but also we have a dedicated uh, mark names for wind barbs when you are doing meteorology, or you can specify the geometry of the mark by doing some WKT. And you can plug in your own because there's a, there's a plugin system if you want to create uh, more types of marks. Let's switch to, to filling polygons. Filling polygons, in the easy way, is just solid color. In uh, uh, CSS, it's done by using the fill property. And we say light gray. Notice the usage of uh, CSS uh, uh, named colors. We can also use the hex uh, specification just like in, in SLD. And if a color is not among the, the many uh, named colors, of course, you, you go hex. Uh, but uh, it's uh, well not um, not everybody would uh, would understand that this is a light gray. Uh, this is easier to to pick up. Now uh, we can get get more complicated. This is uh, an example of doing cemeteries, and uh, we wanted to uh, paint the cemeteries green, which is this shade of green in hexadecimal. But then we also uh, wanted to characterize them and uh, use different type of overlay symbols repeated over over and over on the map to qualify them as uh, Christian, Jewish, or generic. And we can do that by doing some SQL filtering uh, using nested rules. So by default, we start with uh, the green fill. But uh, below 50K, depending on the religions, we, we switch to a fill, which is a base color plus a repeated symbol, which is, gets repeated over and over and over. Uh, another way to repeat symbols, which uh, sometimes is surprising, is hatching. So creating cross fields, uh, diagonal uh, lines, fields, and, and so on. To do them, we actually take a little symbol, like the X here, and uh, repeat it over and over and over, 
uh, giving the appearance of uh, a, a net of uh, crossing lines. And uh, in this case, uh, yeah, we use a shape times uh, with a given size and we specify the stroke with a particular color. And the structure in SLD is pretty much the same, just longer to, uh, to type. Um, let's have a look at painting lines. Uh, this is a, an example that I picked from our rendering of OpenStreetMap. So uh, administrative borders that show up at different uh, zoom level depending on their admin level. So more important uh, borders are showing at low zoom levels and I zoom in, uh, I get uh, more and more detailed borders and the property is pretty easy, stroke and then the color and eventually stroke opacity, stroke width and the like. We can also do uh, something more complicated like doing dashing. So uh, line and then a space and then a line and then a space. And in this case, I went overboard and actually did uh, first a dash array uh, uh, doing the, the lines. So 10, uh, 10 pixels uh, of uh, red line and then a 14 pixels of space. And then I superimposed a circle and used the, the dash after offset here to synchronize the two uh, dashed lines so that one ends up in the holes of the other. Let's go to labeling. Labeling is, uh, well, it would fit a presentation of its own because it has so many vendor options because it's uh, really hard to get a good labeling on a map and uh, native SLD has very little properties to control that. So I'm going to just show you a few examples out of the many properties that we have. One example here is polygon labels. So we say, OK, let's pick the, uh, the, the name of the label from the property full name. We do it in Arial 14 points mold. We place it at the center of the polygon with the anchor point. Uh, we fill it black. Uh, and then we use prioritized um, labeling to make sure that these labels are more important than the street ones, for example, so that uh, the street ones have to move away and the, uh, the polygon ones stay in their uh, um, centroid. Uh, we use auto wrap, which is a vendor option to make the text go on the next line if, the, if it is too long. And uh, goodness of it to make sure that the text is uh, at least 90% inside the polygon that it's um, labeling. Uh, another thing that we can do is to turn labels into obstacle, sorry, point symbols into label uh, obstacles for labels. Let's start from this map. Some of the labels are difficult to see because they overlap too much with uh, the point symbology below. We can use mark label obstacle property in CSS and an equivalent property in SLD to say, oh yeah, but this mark is an obstacle for the labels and so the labels will not overlap. We get less labels, but more readable. When it comes to uh, road labeling, road labeling is always a, a bit uh, of a challenge. We specify, well, the usual label from uh, a property, fonts, and so on. And then we add some uh, vendor options to uh, make the map better. That is, label follow line to make uh, the, the labels follow the line, eventually curving along the line if necessary, repeating them if the line is too long, uh, grouping them because most of the roads here are actually split at intersections. So I would get one uh, tiny label for each and every uh, bit of it. But with label group, we say with LG server, no, please take all the segments that have shared the same level, fuse them together, and then label the result to get a, a better visual result. OK, um, uh, let's move to raster styling. Raster styling is all about either choosing the bands or uh, going from uh, numbers in the raster to colors on the map. Uh, this is an example of a, a color map that goes from values in, uh, in the data to uh, colors in, on the map. We also have a shaded, shaded relief capability now. Uh, it's not shown in the CSS, but it uh, can generate an output like this. It's still a bit experimental at some zoom levels. It doesn't look completely good, but uh, it's a good start. And we are looking for, uh, for people interested in making it better, either by coding uh, and sharing the code or uh, funding uh, the effort. 
Another thing that we can do in GeoServer, besides just selecting the band, is doing contrast announcement. And we stole a page from QGIS here. Uh, normally in SLD, we, we can just say, oh yeah, normalize as the contrast announcement to be used. But uh, we added a bunch of vendor options inside of it to uh, specify what kind of normalization algorithm to use and the eventual parameters to control the normalization algorithm. For example, here we are stretching from minimum to maximum where the minimum is 50 and the maximum is 800 and anything outside will be clamped onto those two values. Other assorted features, yes, we got more. Uh, these are just to give you some quick ideas. GeoServer can do color blending and alpha compositing uh, with, between two layers with vendor options uh, called composite. And uh, here we are, for example, uh, taking two maps, um, one of, uh, of the United States with uh, labels and colors, and the other with is just thick borders uh, around the um, uh, around the states. And we do an alpha compositing to generate this kind of result, where we retain the color of the borders just close to uh, cl to the border itself. And we can do all sorts of fancy stuff with uh, uh, with the compositing as well. Another thing which is pretty, pretty interesting is uh, Z ordering. Uh, so say we have one layer or even multiple layers that uh, need to be sorted when painting uh, to match a given real world sorting. This is an actual intersection somewhere in Germany, I think. Uh, I, I think it has like 15 Z levels. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> and uh, uh, well, you, you do the sorting by uh, providing this uh, sort by property. And, uh, um, and eventually grouping uh, the, um, the layers. If they share the, sort, the same sort by group, uh, even if the features are coming from two different layers, they, they will stack up as if they were just one in, in the map. And this is what's actually happening here because roads and rails are two different layers, but in reality, they variously over overlap with each other. So they are in the same uh, sort by group. We can do geometry transformations. So take a geometry and uh, turn it into something else, like uh, move it to do, do a drop shadow effect or extracted vertices or extracted the start point at the end point. There are a uh, bunch of variations that you can use to, uh, to drive your mapping. If that's not enough, we have rendering transformations, which take the entire uh, raster layer or vector layer that you gave to the SLD and turn it into something else. It's basically a WPS process call on the fly. And some of them are actually optimized for on the fly rendering and they are pretty fast. Contouring is one of them. Another one which is pretty interesting is the GFOL map algebra, which you can call from the SLD or from the CSS and say, well, OK, I got the 13 uh, bands map, uh, an S uh, Sentinel-2, and I want to compute uh, uh, an NDVI on the fly and display the results. And uh, yes, we can do it, uh, embedding the, the GFOL transformation uh, right into uh, the style. One pro uh, thing that we added in 2.20 uh, is uh, legend and map control for the rules. Sometimes he, to get a, a certain result, you have to stand up a complicated set of, uh, of rules, uh, which when depicted in, in the legend, they just look ugly. Uh, here I have a, um, a simple example. In the typical top states map, we have one rule which is called boundary, which, well, is not particularly informative. I can see that this is the boundary. So we can say in the SLD, uh, vendor option name inclusion map only, which means it's going to be used only for the map generation. And we could also do the opposite and say legend only and create rules which look good in, on the legend, but they wouldn't be useful for map making. So you can. Uh, uh, mix and match them to create an SLD that targets both nice map generation and nice legend generation, while retaining the ability to do bounding box filtering and just displaying, for example, the rules that are visible in that one area that you are displaying. OK, uh, enough about uh, writing uh, styles by hand. What about point and click editors? Uh, there are a few options. One of them is the QGIS SLD export. You can uh, edit a, a style in, uh, um, uh, in QGIS and then go into the properties, uh, style, save as SLD, 
it's going to generate an SLD that you can import into your server. The result is not going to be quite the same, but very close, uh, especially if you are using uh, simple symbology. For more advanced bits, uh, we are probably going to lose some of the rendering, either because SLD does not support the particular type of symbolizer that QJS has, or because the exporter is not good enough to, to turn it into an SLD. So for example, if you are linking a property to a prop, uh, line width to an attribute, uh, SLD can express it, but the QJS exporter cannot do it. It doesn't know how to write it. Uh, I don't have a slide for this. Uh, jo Jody Garner from Geocat actually gave me a screenshot, but I forgot to include it. But I can tell you that there is also a plugin called QJS Bridge for QJS that uh, simplifies the workflow of uh, taking styles and transferring them to GeoServer. You just give it a, the URL of, uh, of a GeoServer and the administrative passwords, uh, administrative credentials, sorry. And you say, OK, take this QGIS project and publish it in GeoServer, and it's going to transfer all the styles for you automatically. So it makes the workflow quite a bit quicker. Another option that we have uh, as a community module in GeoServer is GeoStyler which is a, a web-based style editor. Uh, you can see a screenshot here. It can integrate into the style editing page of GeoServer as a tab, or it can be run standalone if you want. And uh, if you look for GeoStyler, you can actually play with a demo online straight away. Uh, another option that we have today is the Map Store Styler. Map Store is the web client uh, that GeoSolutions maintains. It's open source. And since a few versions, it has a, a point-and-click styler that can do uh, quite a bit of symbology. Maybe not everything, but uh, it's, it's getting more and more comprehensive. And it can also do categorized uh, classifications and the like. And uh, it's going to use the GeoServer REST API to fetch a style, edit it, and then save it back in GeoServer. And that's actually something that is being used uh, in GeoNode uh, for um, uh, um, for map editing, and that's all. Ah, thanks very much. Uh, so actually, we have three minutes uh, for questions. It's, uh, wow, this is overwhelming, uh, Andrea. All the options uh, possible yeah, with styling. Lot. Remember, starting like 15 years ago, editing SLD in VI go through all the mistakes, and now you can even use UIs. Um, not too many questions, because the, it, it was so clear what you were uh, telling us. Um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll see just one question, basically, uh, which is, do you have a link to the slides? People are very eager to, to get started. You, uh, we, we will publish a link to the slides um, in the next few days in a blog post uh, uh, at uh, the GeoSolutions website. Okay, and, uh, and of course, this this uh, presentation will be will be available as a recording in uh, well, hopefully a few weeks or a few, uh, and then uh, yeah, people will have all the information. Um, mm -hmm. What else is there to talk about? Um, I think uh, it was very clear this. Uh, and then, oh yeah, what would be your personal preference? Because you basically talked about SLD versus uh, Geo CSS. But if you make a map yourself, would you use Geo CSS uh, or does it depend? Always Geo CSS, unless okay. I, I'm, I'm forced to use SLD. But I'm. Um, uh, I'm biased because I'm also the current maintainer of the GeoCSS extension. I I am not the original creator of it. David Winslow uh, put it together years ago. And when he okay. left the project, I took over the maintenance of the module. But for example, I know that uh, Jody Garnett, which is another core developer, likes a lot of YSLD. I, for one, cannot stand YAML in general. So it's like torture to, to use any, any sort okay. of YAML okay. in front of my eyes. OK. I have the same with Tommel, which is even, but we get used to it. Um, well, Andrea, thanks very much again. And um, we'll go over to the next uh, speaker.
En 